Welcome everybody to the Anime Lounge Podcast. I'm Matt, one of your co-hosts. I discuss the differences between the manga and anime in Matt's manga mentions. So everybody knows, I took six pages of notes. Like there, there is quite a bit of, I wouldn't say changes, but there's a lot of things that were left out as far as the anime is concerned. And I'm Lance, your other co-host. I walk you through Lance's lessons, where I teach you a Japanese word related to each and every episode. Today's Lance's lessons is going to be the Japanese word for fox, and that is kitsune. Join us and immerse yourself as we explore the world of anime. Don't forget to drop by the lounge every other week. Again, that's Anime Lounge Podcast. Hey everybody, this is RangerCast, Tyler here. Now due to scheduling issues, we won't have a new episode for you for another couple of weeks, but we do have a special treat for you, which I'll get to. But like Mark Maron, I'm going to sit here and vamp for a bit. So next time in RangerCast, we'll be talking about the uh, reaction to Once and Always, you know, reacting to the reaction, I suppose, uh, in its first week of availability, or rather the first week in which it was available, because uh, it released kind of like early in, a week as far as Netflix is concerned. Uh, it was no, number eight most watched movie worldwide. It didn't chart like that in the U.S., but it did really well in Argentina, Portugal, Brazil. Uh, so we're going to be talking about, you know, what that means uh, for the future, if anything. Also, we're going to be talking about the Writers Guild of America strike. Now, the current uh, Power Rangers Writers Room which just finished work on Cosmic Fury, obviously. Uh, they are not union, but the writers who are coming in under Jonathan Whistle and Jenny Klein are. So we're going to talk about what that might mean, what a prolonged strike might mean for the future of Power Rangers, as well as the broader issues uh, surrounding those contract negotiations. And, you know, SAG and DGA, they're also um, about to start negotiations with um with the studios so all this could really have an impact on what happens next with power rangers depending on how where when it's made um also how have you been sleeping lately you know lots of people out there i'm one of them have been dealing with a lot of stress and anxiety during the pandemic and that translates to bedtime issues there are gadgets there are podcasts but i'd like to talk to you about the humble sleep mask and the folks at manta sleep most sleep masks put a little pressure on your eyeballs so you wake up bleary-eyed. Not Manta. They use these raised cups over your eyes so you don't you know, mess up your eyebrows and you can read your cell phone in the morning. You know, that's the most important thing. And they're adjustable. You can move the, cu- the uh, cups around. Uh, you get hot cups, cold cups. They're good for side sleepers, front sleepers. You know, if you hang up you know, upside down with the ceiling like a bat. Uh, I got the uh, weighted sleep mask. It doesn't put pressure, you know, on your eyes, but around your eyes, all that. It goes well with my weighted blanket, but I slept like a baby. So go to our show notes. There's a link to Mantis Sleep, and you can get 10% off using link in our show notes. Now to the interview. Back in 2006, I shot an email to an address I found for a voice actor from back in the day. He was kind enough to give a 17-year-old about a half hour of his time. And for those of you who don't know your range cast history, and to be honest, that's probably most of you, I'm talking about the late Robert Axelrod. He, of course, voiced Lord Zed, Finster, Lokar, and a few other monsters over the years, that early period. Uh, he was also Wizardmon and Kilomon and Digimon. did a lot of anime voices over the years, but probably in the last decade and a half, he uh, was better known for his work with the comedy duo Tim and Eric. He was in uh, Check It Out with Dr. Steve Brule, he was in the Billion Dollar Movie, and seemed really game for the absurd work in those shows. Um, Unfortunately, he passed away in 2019 after a long illness, but I'll never forget the kindness he showed me and his openness to answering some of my questions. I should probably warn you guys, the audio is a bit rough. You know, this is my first interview, so, you know, bear with me on this. Uh, But I hope you guys enjoy, and we will see you in a couple weeks. And I'm going to throw it to 2006, Tyler. And we're back. This is RangerCast, and we're honored to have with us tonight Robert Axelrod. Best known as the voices of villains such as Lord Zed, Lokar, and Finster, Mr. Axelrod agreed to lend us his voice for an interview. 
Welcome to the show. Oh, thanks. How did you first get into voice acting? Uh, it was in 1980. Uh, I answered an ad in a uh, casting newspaper for uh, uh, dubbing English into a foreign film called The Boat is Full. And uh, I got the part. And I had done some cartoon voices when I was younger. So I knew my way around voice. Uh, knew my way around the. Mm. Uh, and just continued working in the dubbing field ever since. And how did you first get on board Power Rangers? Well, I was working for Saban Entertainment for years before the Power Rangers hit. So they knew me. Uh, so when the Power Rangers came up, I just I auditioned for the role of Finster, and I got the part. <clears throat> then into the show, the character of Lord Zed came up, uh, was created, and I uh, I asked to audition for the part, and they didn't want to they didn't want to audition me. I had to really convince them uh, that uh, that I'd be right for the part. So uh, they let me audition, and I did this fantastic voice, and it blew them out. And they didn't believe I could maintain the voice through the series. I had to call the producer and and talk him into it. But finally, they gave me the part. What do you uh, like most about playing Lord Zed? I like his his integrity. <laughs> he's, uh, he's a whole character. He's totally evil. Yeah, I guess that's integrity. And uh and uh you know, the, the word integrity means wholeness. Mm -hmm. And uh when the character started the character started going downhill when he lost that integrity when they started mm -hmm. putting in too much comedy. Yeah. Is it true that parents actually complained about Lord Zed being too evil and that this forced the dumbing down in marriage in season three? Yes. What do you think about that? Uh, I think it's bullshit. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Uh, I think it's great that they complained. I, I, I mean, you know, uh, it's great to get that kind of feedback. Uh, it let us know that people were watching the show and caring about the show, uh, and uh, and were were involved enough in the show to to call in and write in their concerns. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, you know now they talk about interactive TV uh, and interactive videos and. Uh, and that was a, that was a form of interactive uh, uh, TV. Mm -hmm. so I thought it was great. When the character started losing integrity, I didn't care for it too much, though. Right. When they when they uh, they could have they could have changed the character in a different direction. I'm glad they brought Rita back. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but then to have them get married mm -hmm. and to to have them arguing and, and, and playing that for comedy that I didn't care for too much. Yeah. But how did you get along with the other cast members or did you uh, run into them at all? Oh, yeah, sure. We got along great. Any uh, we, personal we, faves? We were all friends from, we were all friends from before. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the voiceover people. We, we had a, a group of us that were doing these these this work for years, so we we run into each other all the time, and we had outings. Uh, mm -hmm. So we knew each other. Yeah, and what about the Ranger actors? I hardly ever ran into them. Uh, occasionally, they I run into them in the studio. Ah. Uh. 
and uh, we had a lot of respect for each other. Yeah. Like two different two different sections. Yeah, two different worlds. So, yeah. So, uh, what have you been working on these days? Well, I just finished a, a video. Uh, it was a, it's a, a uh, an interactive video, in fact, uh, playing a mummy. It's an educational uh, computer video. Ah. Uh. Called it was called the uh, treasure hunt. Ah. Uh. Where the mummy is the host. Uh, it guides the viewer through certain clues of uh, of geography. It's educational. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see, I did a I did a Japanese cartoon. I forget the name of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do so many of those things, <laughs> and uh, where they just they all become <laughs> they all yeah. Become, they all start melting together. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. But that's the last thing I did. Uh, voiceover wise. and uh, Well, no, I, the, the mummy was all of me on camera. Mm-hmm. And do you still keep in touch with anybody from the cast and crew of Power Rangers? Oh, sure. We run into each other all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last time we saw each other, unfortunately, was at a, a, a funeral. The funeral of a fact, in fact, one of our fellow voiceovers, uh, people, Bob Pappenbrook. Oh, that was my next question. Oh, about Bob Pappenbrook? Yeah. Any memories of him to share? Yeah. Yeah. This is this is the funeral we went to. It was actually a memorial. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> great guy. Great mm-hmm. guy. Very, mm-hmm. a lot of fun to work with. Yeah. Uh, always had, was joking and a, and a, Gigantic talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I recently uh, heard from a friend who spoke with a writer on Wild Force, who said that uh, that Bob Pappenbrook, or as apparently everybody there knew him, Pappy, um, uh, yeah. he was always uh, so, so happy on like when work when he was working, and uh, was was always uh, laughing, was always smiling. Yeah. 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 Any uh, advice for aspiring voice actors? Well, just keep plugging away, and uh, it's a very tough field, and it's very expensive to get into. Uh, I I got into it early, so I didn't have to go through these expenses. It's you got to make a uh, a CD, and uh, 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 but my advice is just to hang in there and keep plugging and mm-hmm. keep up with the technology. And uh, and uh, you'll be successful. Any uh, final thoughts or memories or stories to share? About the Power Rangers? Anything. Anything yeah. you feel like we'd like to know. Oh, well, I have one story about the Power Rangers when we went to the premiere of the movie. Uh, the first Power Ranger movie. Do you, you recall that? Yes, of course. Uh, I am Saban, the the uh, head of head of Saban Productions, threw a big party after the film. It like uh, they took up a whole parking lot. It was it was amazing. Uh, there were games for the kids and uh, and food and uh, music and uh, and of course the cast was there, both the on camera cast and the voiceover cast. So the on-camera kids, they were kind of running around sort of lost. Mm -hmm. But the voiceover people, we got up on the microphone, there was an MC, and we started playing uh, Power Rangers trivia using using our voices on the show. And as soon as we we got on the microphone using the voices of the show, I got up and did Lord Zed. A tremendous crowd of kids came, and we were playing Power Rangers trivia over the microphone, and uh, uh, we signed autographs for, uh, God, it must have been two hours. It was great. Wow. That's, um, were you pretty much, I, I've read that you, that you voice actors were pretty much uh, neglected, though. 
uh, often. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, very true. Uh, the height of that was, uh, and it's not a pleasant memory, was uh, the program for the live show mm-hmm. did not carry our names. Oh, man. Yeah. And uh, uh, that was an insult. Yeah, I'd be insulted too. Yeah. Uh, any uh, final thoughts just to add? No, that's it. Okay, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. And a very special thanks to the moderators and posters of Ranger Board and Henshin Justice for providing us with sticky threads to get questions from the fans for this interview. And for RangerCast. This is Robert Axelrod, otherwise known as Lord Zed. You're listening to RangerCast. If you like what you just heard, find us at RangerCast.net or look us up in your favorite podcast app. Reach out to us on Twitter or leave a voicemail on our website. The opening theme is by Daniel Park. The ending theme is by me. RangerCast is distributed under Creative Commons license. A tribute and share alike.